Hi everyone, hope you're well, and welcome back. Another one in this introduction to Kill Team series. This week we're going to be looking at line of sight. The easiest way to explain this is with a lot of examples. Don't worry, people can find it intimidating, it's not that bad. Hopefully, by the end of this, you'll know all about line of sight and what you need to do to use it in the game. Don't worry, we'll take it step by step and we'll work through it all. A couple of things to remember before we get into this. When we're talking about line of sight, we're talking about a lot of invisible lines that we need to draw. They're all straight lines and they're going to be one millimetre wide and they're to various points between our operative and the intended target. Some vocabulary there that's useful if you're going to refer back to the main rule book. Just remember, we're talking about some invisible lines and everything should make sense. Let's jump straight into some examples. I think these are going to be better full screen so you can really see what's going on. One thing we need to talk about is the type of order an operative has does affect the line of sight rules when it's targeted. If an intended target has the conceal order, it needs to be visible, not obscured and not in cover to be considered a valid target. Conversely, if an intended target has the engage order, then it must be both visible and not obscured to be considered a valid target. With two different cover options to consider and two potential order types, let's break that down and look at each one fully and how to distinguish between them. Before we go further, let's talk briefly about cover lines. Cover lines are imaginary lines drawn from the active operative to the intended target. They should be drawn from a single point on the active operative space to the entire base of the targeted operative space. Next, let's tackle what it means to be visible. To be classed as visible, you can draw a line from the eye line of the active operative to any part of the target operative, which is not the base. Basically, what that means is to the actual figure. In some instances, if the base gets in the way, for example, if the target is above you or below you, treat the base as it's invisible. It's pretty simple, right? Not that scary. Next, let's consider what it means to be obscured. To be considered obscured, we need to check the targeted operative meets a few requirements. Firstly, is it more than one circle away from a piece of terrain where a cover line crosses it from the active operative? And the active operative is not within one triangle of a terrain feature which the line passed through. If both of those conditions are met, the target is treated as obscured. We've taken a look at obscured, let's move on to cover. Again here we need to take a look at the order that the targeted operative has. If the targeted operative has the conceal order, they're assumed to be hunkered down hiding behind it. If however they have the engage order, they're considered to be using it for protection. For the targeted operative to be considered in cover, the following conditions need to be true. The targeted operative must be more than one circle away from the active operative targeting them. The targeted operative is within one triangle of a point at which a cover line crosses any point on the base via a terrain feature that is able to provide cover. If those conditions are met, then the targeted operative is considered to be in cover. So in summary then guys, you should have a really good understanding now of the line of sight rules and how to use them in your games. One thing I would recommend is if you're having fun, even if you're not getting it exactly right, don't worry about it. At the end of the day, yes, they had flavor to the game and they can be a little bit convoluted and complicated to get right all of the time, 100%. Don't worry about it. Competitive gaming, a little bit different, but for what I want, and I would, I would assume what most people want is to have a good time. One thing I would ask you, if you've made it this far in the video, is if you could just hit that subscribe button, leave me a like, leave me a comment, let me know what was good, what was bad, what you'd like to see in the future, I'd really appreciate it. It helps the channel grow. Well guys, I hope you have a really good hobby week. Keep gaming, and remember, if you're gonna do crack, make sure it's plastic. See ya!